first question. Um, maybe if we could ask, um, what do you think are some of the differences in uh, motivating and managing women as opposed to, to, to men? What do you think? Who'd like to go first? Okay. Um, I have observed that women are intrinsically keen to detail. And men, so I have to say something positive. Um, I'm thinking hard. I'm thinking hard. But men really, you, uh, yes, look at the big picture. Exactly. Um, we have the concept. Um, but women, you know, we can attend to details. We're so patient. And I think it's because of our genes. In the prehistoric times when men lived in caves, really, the Hikura had research with um, The men go out, went out, would go out to hunt, and the women are left in the caves with the kids. And so they take care of the kids, they take care of the kids, they would cook, they would, you know, attend to the house. And they would, um, they would look at this hole, which we now call window. They would look at this hole so that um, they could see in advance if um, dangerous animals are coming. And so they would do what's necessary to, like, lock the door, but they didn't have locks before, so maybe, I don't, I don't, I don't know. We um, 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 block their cave entrance. And these things women do alone while men hunt. And when the hunters arrive, women cook, prepare the food. So, you know, we, we have born to win. We won all the household chores. And the men came, it comes, came, they come home. Tired from hunting, would wait for the meal and to eat. Well, Bella Medical Group is about 85% women and 15% men. So I think it's only in the last three years or four years that I've actually, you know, started to understand how to motivate the men. I think first of all, it's good to be still a woman. I find that a lot of women are becoming so manly and that the men are feeling um, overwhelmed because women have evolved and men, they say, have stayed the hunters. And we've taken their role. Now we go to work. No, and we, no but the nice thing about men is they're very, for me, huh, they concentrate more. Women, because we have a bigger optic chiasma. So going medically, our crisp, the left and right brain really have bigger fibers or bigger highways. And so women tend to multitask. And so when I talk to the women executives, like, you know, Agnes and I, we don't even finish sentences. We already know, she knows what I want, or Marge, or, you know, says we understand each other. But with the men, I've gotten to the point where I realize that they're very focused, and they don't jump from one topic to the other like I have a tendency to do. The one thing I've changed is I always talk to them not to them, but I always, I, I try to become more feminine when I'm talking to a man. That they're not, I can't treat women and men equally. I always ask them, whereas I tend to be a little bossy when it comes to the women, when it comes to the men, I do, I make requests. Even for the doorman or something. I always say, Roger, can you bring my doorman? Is it okay if I am? Because if you, if you give them an order, they, sh they kind of just, you know, they're, they're being passive aggressive, but they don't like to be ordered around so much by the women. And, you know, rather than fight City Hall, you know, you get much better cooperation if you give them the respect that they deserve. I, you know, because even with the women, I tend to be, they do, res they do deserve respect, but sometimes I'm in such a hurry, I'll forget. But the men are more sensitive to that because they're being, you know, in a workplace where 85%, including most of the bosses are women, they have already. I don't know, some sort of defense mechanism. And so if I want to, be, to ask them to really cooperate and love to do what they do, I have to make them feel more important. I have to make them feel like, I, you know, I really am requesting. I'm not ordering you to do that. And 
I get a lot of, when I need someone who will concentrate and get the job done all the way without any distractions and stuff like that, then, you know, this is what they're very good at. And they, they, the men, as she said, they're hunters. They also want to protect. So, you know, I have, I don't know, I, I've always grown up. It's not a good trait, I think, but I'm always growing up. I've always acted a little dumb. You know, that's why people think, really, you know, it's, it's come to the point where um, I was resentful because I had a boyfriend, not kind of, my previous one, who, uh, who always makes the album that he made me. And a lot of people really believe him. And, you know, it was just, he came into my life. I mean, he came to Bellary. He, I have this tendency to want my men to, to work with me because I feel more pampered, I feel more protected, I can become a girl. But in a situation like that, like with him, he came into Bella Medical with year 2000. I started it in 1990. But there are people to this day who tell them all, I made her, and people believe it. And I'm like, how can they believe it when his own business is competing with me now? And it's not doing that well. And I remember Grace Lee in a, in a dinner, she said, this is Jesus, man. She said, all the guys in the table said, you know, oh, you, your endorser is Dr. Bella, you know, this guy, he's the one who made her. And then she looks at them and says, really? Do you guys have a brain? Is he a doctor? Does he do liposuction? I don't know. Is, you know, and once this business, it's a kind of thing. So men, my point is, you have to make them, you know, they will serve you, but it's a, it's a balance where, I don't know, I, I, I need to, I act dumb so I can be cherished, but then sometimes they feel like it's them who does everything. So now I have to keep passing this road, I want to be cherished, and I want to be respected. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to, to walk. But men are really capable, and if you just make them feel that they are, they become more capable, and they become better at whatever they do. But if you, you know, if you try to, like, if I used to think putting them down would work, but it doesn't work. You just get a, a lot of, a lot of um, resistance. So I think if there's anything we should learn, is that even if we are strong women, and I know, just let's always remember that they deserve respect and they, should, they really respond better to being asked to do something rather than do this, go there, you know, that sort of thing. And remember, they are not multitaskers. They're not dumb, they just can't, they don't have the same brain as you do. So you have to remember, when you are asking them to do this thing, don't ask them to do this thing and that thing because they'll, they'll get overwhelmed. <laughs> here, here. First, let's look at the global perspective now. That's for gender equality. If both men and women could have equal access to opportunities with basic right to education, this is a matter of who gets it first, who gets it right. So um, the same question was raised to me how when I walked inside 198 um, men conference of Hyundai, how do I, and because I'm the only woman in that, in that ballroom, how do I respond? I said, it's not my problem to question how should they respond to me when I am in front of them, okay? So that's the global perspective. Secondly, be, let's look at inside the cultural mindset, and I take it from the Filipino family of ano ba ang babae at ano ba ang lalaki, ano ba ang nanay at tatay, asawa ang babae, asawa ang lalaki. I only have one thing to say which I shared with the interviewer. I will admit that major decisions are made by the husband and minor decisions are made by the wife. But in my life and in Karthik, I do not know with you girls, we, don't, we do not make major decisions in life, only minor, minor decisions every day. So that's my answer of what makes man and woman different. And of course, lastly, is the biological. I didn't ask God to make me a woman. Neither did they ask him to be a man. But as a woman, I should endure the labor, right? The labor of bearing a child, the child inside you for nine months, that makes you different and you're being wired differently. And that gives you that sense of intuition because when the child inside you, you tend to have that feel or that feeling of your boy or your girl just wants some sense of freedom. And so therefore, I was just a bit scientific in my approach and, and uh, my suggestion to all ladies or those pregnant women is it doesn't have to be very expensive, that there's a rule of um, uh, children have to be 80% like the mother and 20% like the child. A nursing book will help you, I tell you. 
and it's just a hundred pesos nursing book. You just have to look at what happened to a to your child inside you when it's one month old. And it says, Oh, the eyes are growing. So what are you supposed to do if your eyes want to grow? It has to be eat lots of falsum, right? So what are the food that helps you and your baby inside to grow that? Oh, when it's three months in the baby, the skin grows. And so therefore, you know what to take, palaman C juice, so that they will have strong bones and teeth. And so the question is, why are my children those scholars? Why are they the best in their class? Was it because of what I read in the nursing book? Was it because they're 80% made out of me? I don't know. Only time can answer. So that's what makes men and women different. It's a matter of choice. You can be a woman, but you can be a dumb woman. You can be a man, you can be an intelligent woman. You choose the path you want. That makes you a different woman. Very good. Darlene. Um, <clears throat> It took me some time really to come up with an answer to your question because I've never seen the world through um, that perspective that, that men and women, like um, when I was uh, after graduation from college, the philosophy department of the University of the Philippines was all male. And then I just studied hard and um, so hard that when I applied for the faculty, they could not reject me. So they, they, they broke that rule and uh, accepted me as the first uh, instructor and then now in Pag-ibig Fund, our senior management uh, team is composed of uh, five officers. Three are women. Uh, and so, how do I motivate the men? I give them orders. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> no, that's a joke. But uh, uh, I, I recognize that there are really differences in the makeup of men and women so men are physically stronger uh, women are more tailored to to, en to endure and uh, to really endure the emotional challenges in life so I think most men suffer a heart attack because women when we uh, have uh, broken hearts we would have girlfriends and we can uh, you know, we have free psychiatrists in, in our girlfriends. So like I, I would always have my, my sister as my best friend. But men would always keep, most men would keep it to themselves. And number two, what I, uh, note, what I take note of is that uh, men are scared of asking questions. So when I tell them, well, where do we meet? Just ask someone for the directions. And they just can't ask the question. And then another uh, observation is that uh, men will see things black or white. Uh, women will have different shades. So uh, there, we're just different, and so we would uh, assume different roles. But for me, uh, if you, uh, I treat everyone with respect. I treat everyone. Uh, I respect their work, and uh, I see no difference in how they're they're motivated. Uh, at least in my in the organization of them. Very good. Complimentary skills, and thank the Lord for them. We have a question um, right here. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kit Yu from ADP. Um, thank you, ladies, for um, inspira such inspirational um, talks for us. But what was striking for me was that it seems like you were raised by awesome dads. There were no issues about you being girls or boys, but the story was you, know, you were encouraged to fly and make decisions for yourselves. I, I have an awesome dad, and this is the reason why I'm here. I'm pretty good with work, and I think that's a story for many of us. Now, the other thing was that you are also great moms, or your mentors, or you have um, subordinates where you're encouraging to be women leaders in the future. What can you recommend to us who are mentors of future women leaders or moms of daughters who, you know, we want to succeed in life too? That's it. Thank you. Who would like to uh, try that one? Um, it's, there are no secret formulas to begin with um, on coaching, on um, I could give you an A to Z list of what, what shaped me or what has shaped you. And uh, one is just, it will always be a matter of choice a matter of timing, no? and a matter of creating opportunities. 
So when you say a matter of choice, priorities would come in if you're, because one thing great about women is we are great crisis managers because of our biological setup, our cultural mindset. So in the house, when there's, when there's panic, I tell you, it's women who controls the emotions of everybody. Uh, you, you just could tell the husband, you stay, stay there and just make sure that nothing happens. <laughs> nothing happens. But the truth is, you're the one orchestrating. Okay? So, if my, my response to Asia women, future CEOs, is that continue to choose. And you have to be passionate with your choice. It's just like, Choosing how to bake, choosing how to, to do yoga, choosing choosing to be bellified. So these are choices in life. And when you choose, um, what makes it right is not your choice. It's what you do after that makes your choice right or wrong. Remember that. Because even if the choice is right, but then you tremble and you panic and you cannot... Um, you cannot tweak it when crisis on and when the situation comes, then you will tell I made a wrong choice, right? Just like also when you when you when you're married, it's a choice of living up, suf sacrificing and suffering, going through it just for the sake of the children. It will always be a choice, and it's an everyday decision, okay? And then the second one, as I was saying, is that when you make the right choice, right timing is very important. And we are again lucky because we're more intuitive. When opportunities comes in front of us, girls, better seize it. Because if you fail to seize it, don't worry, somebody gets, somebody else will get it. Okay? So don't be afraid to seize it because you have your rule number one. Even if you have seized it, don't think you made the right thing. It's what you do after. And of course, the third thing that I said was create the opportunity. That choice doesn't end there. How do you create opportunities? How do you innovate? How do you create something out of that, of the choice that you've made? Now, if you want to be more specific, we all have to be bad girls here. Tell me your choice, and let's do a plan for that choice of yours. That's the way to do it, OK? That's my take. Of course, they will have their take, too. Um, what's my advice for you to become a leader ba? To, to succeed, to succeed. Okay. Okay. So what can you share with us? Okay. The secret to, um, to success is a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. Um, for me, I think uh, take risks. I uh, like. Um, I, I think for the women here, um, you have to have the courage to take risks. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, uh, because uh, you know when you make a mistake, everyone makes mistakes, and just be courageous enough to accept the consequences. So the important thing is that when you make a decision, uh, it's it's a good decision that you have made. And when, when do you say that it's a good de decision? It's not, it's not dependent on the consequences or what happened because that will make you a hindsight moralist, like it already happened. See, sabi ko na sayo, dapat mo ginawa or what. But at the point of making that decision, was that decision right? So did you ask for uh, inputs of people whose uh, opinions you value? Did you uh, get... Uh, relevant information I'm, uh, no one is even expecting you to get all information because that's not uh, possible so all relevant information and then uh, think through it give it some time and then make the best decision now if it turns out uh, uh, negatively then just accept it and then move on every day it's a there's there's a chance at life and then number two also having the courage and being bold uh, I don't like prayers of asking for strength so that I can suffer. I don't like that. 
I will pray for strength so that I can get myself out of that situation which gives me the suffering. Okay, so, uh, tama na siguro yung parang Panginoon sana makayanan ko itong paghihirap na to because you always have the, the choice uh, whether to stay in uh, inside or uh, to get yourself out. And then, uh, lastly, the choice is yours to be happy. So, okay naman yun eh. Basta sa akin, when, you, when you're alive, when you have family and find a, a good support group, it could be your family. To me, it's my family. Uh, uh, friends, uh, yung lovers, or whatever. Basta you have support uh, family, you have a support group, and then choose to be grateful for the things that you have. And just don't focus on what you don't have. Okay. You saw my boss. She's telling me to do many things, Crystal. I think I'll talk more. I have a, actually, I think it's very important to talk to you as mothers rather than as leaders because I think childhood are the formative years and I think I, my children are super wonderful. And I don't, I mean, I know I try to do my best, but you know, I think what I did was, first of all, with my childhood, my parents were always there. You know, not there physically, but just you knew I could be very bold and try to do anything and fail and pass or whatever. Develop courage in me because I always would look back and one of them would always be there. I knew that if I made a mistake, they would be there for me. And it just gives you so much more confidence to try. Because I know this in the Filipino, Filipino culture, a lot of people are are afraid. And that's why I'm saying it's better to do it in the formative years because it takes so much more coaching. And all their past and all their bad luggage is so heavy on them that I really don't do, unless somebody's already with the right characteristics, then I will coach. But I cannot turn someone who's so negative or always thinking, you know, everything's a problem and it's heavy. It just steals my energy and I don't have you know, I need my energy to lead this company, so I will not be able, I, I actually say it's a waste of time because it just takes 100 times more effort to coach someone who's got all this negativity. So let's make ch our children already positive. First of all, I think you should always believe in them. The worst thing you can do is compare. One of my doctors, she has a son who is handsome, he's eight years old, and I could hear her all the time you know, why don't you become more like your brother? Your brother's an honor student. Your brother is this, your brother is that. Because the younger one was kind of like always being compared to the older one. I said, you should stop that. Don't do that anymore. Because the more this little boy was a problem in school, flunky, I said, don't keep comparing because I hate being compared. Thank God I'm an only child, but I really hate being compared. So I said, just tell him he's wonderful. Him, he's different, he's unique. And the moment she did that, this guy, his older brother's second honors in the South, he's first. Going from failure to that, I said, just stop mentioning the brother. And I think it's a very common thing to compare. You think you're motivating. It's, it's because everybody wants to be unique. I don't want to be compared to someone. Number two, with my children and with me, they spoiled me but didn't. They always left me a little hungry. There was always something that I wanted to work for. Then you have to work for that. Then you, you know, and they would talk to me like an adult and share, and that's what I did to Crystal, and that's what I did to Quark. And so you can see Crystal keeps coming here, and mommy, you have to do this one. I gave him a love for work. Um, it's not work, I always say, you know, if you love your work, you never work a day in your life. Because it doesn't feel like work, this whole Bella Medical Group. It's a family affair. It's still a small family affair, and our, 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 our employees are part of our family. And that's the way, you know, I want to treat everyone. It's always, and don't ever, you know, I get very shocked with, what I hear sometimes about, wow, does, does, you know, like our maids, we talk to them as equals. I get shocked when people say, like, they should, you know, like a, that other ex guy who would get mad at me because he says, why do you feed them the same food? Why can't they drink Coke? Why do they? Because they're people. It's like you don't have, that's why my daughter, she just goes everywhere. She's so charitable. She's like, everybody's a human being. That's what everybody respects. I mean, ex that's what we all are, really. I always say, you know, Crystal, Every day you should thank God you were born into this family. Because so easily you could be there in the squatter area. It was really 
a matter of sometimes, you know, just being born in the right place at the right time. These people are having a hard time because they don't have the opportunities you have. So in where you are now, you always have to share and give back because, you know, there but for the grace of God go you. That's what my dad always used to tell me. There you could be, but for the grace of God, you're here. So out of gratitude, you always give back. And then you get into the integrity issue. If you just raise them up to, to believe in themselves and know that they can do what they can do, and you choose people who are like that, you don't hire people who want to be negative and want to lose and want to make everything a problem because it's so hard, so much energy spent on them. You know, I know it kind of sounds selfish, but you know, choose someone with the right attitude already, then you can just really train them. Now with the leader part of it, it takes a lot for a person to be a leader, to have the time to, to, to spend and coach, etc. Make sure the person you're doing that for is worth it. And always, don't spoil your kids. But you know what I'm so, it's our fault that the men are becoming spoiled and lazy. It's our fault that a lot of them, are, you know, I see now like, in my time, the guys pay for everything. Now, but the girls work so hard because in the family, the guy gets to watch TV. But the girls are cooking, the girls are, are, are cl cleaning. It's the mothers, the mothers that are spoiling your kids. So please allow your men to be men, to be able to lead the family because that's how it should be. You know, I always believe now that I'm, I, I read the Bible, I know that the man is the head of the family and that I will actually submit. I didn't submit to my first husband, but if I have a second one, I will be, but I want that man to be worthy of my submitting, someone who takes care of me and the family who I can respect, right? And then I will, because in the end, that's the way the man should be. And we're making our men weak. So, you know, I, I think since you're all 35, you're still in the formative years. You know, so stop it, it's your fault. If the, our daughters get bad husbands, it's your fault. So just do something about it, okay? I'm all for it. Okay, please, one more question here. Uh. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Raza Pira, and I'm an economist for Oxford Business Group. And uh, I would just first like to point out the fact that the Philippines here has the highest women empowerment, empowerment indicators in the world, and that 43% of executive level positions in business and government are held by women here. Two past presidents that were women, possibly a third. And so clearly it's a country that doesn't need female quotas. And I would just like to ask what your opinion is on placing uh, quotas for women empowerment, empowerment in other countries. That's a good question. Would it work in other countries to, to get the same results we have in Philippines? Um, it is very difficult because um, most of the most of the countries that you, you have in mind now, the root cause is really cultural. We you know we like we cannot we can't tell India to look at the Philippine model and adopt the same because it's really it, it was a complex history. Um, we can't tell. Indonesia to the, look at the Philippines and, or Korea. Um, but we can market the concept. But it's just that I think there are many women organizations existing today in the Philippines. Like um, there are women in business, lady CEOs, Filipina CEOs, and etc. And um, what we need would be maybe to make these organizations um, official and um, consolidate so that we can have a larger voice, uh, louder voice, and represent the Philippines as a model for women empowerment. First in Asia, but somebody has to start. Okay, we're getting a bit, I know it's, uh, people are probably getting hungry. Perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll let Re Rebecca Bustamante come to the stage and, uh, and uh, finish up things. Don't you think the speakers deserve a big, big, big round of applause?